Hi guys, this is Val from Val K Inc. and today we're doing something a little bit different. I've always wanted a Dark Link Nendoroid, specifically the one from Breath of the Wild. So I thought I would take a chance and do a little modification on a Nendoroid to make my very own Dark Link. I'm going to be basing him off of this design. To start, we are going to use a Majora's Mask Nendoroid Link because I think that's the closest to his design. Don't worry, this is not an authentic one. To start, we're going to use some acetone to clean up the face. I've actually always really liked doing this because it's really soothing. But what we want is to clear off all of the factory paint and take off any dust or grime that's left over on the plastic. Next, we're going to focus on some really small mods. Basically, I'm taking off some larger chunks of plastic, and I'm also going to be ripping off some seams, and I'm also going to be filling in the seam on the two-part hat. As neat as it is that the Majora's Mask Link has a swivel hat, I do want a solid hat for my figure. Now everything's prepped, and it's on to the face. To get the eyes even, what I like to do is take two pieces of post-it note paper, cut the same shape, and then align them on my face. Once I'm happy with that, I usually take a pencil or a sharpie marker and make guidelines for the eyes that I'm going to paint around on the face. Once those marks are dry, I can peel off the post-it note paper and I have a great guide for the eyes. Basically, all of the pieces next get a primer coat of acrylic paint. This color actually ended up being very close to the hair color that I needed for this figure anyway. This is going a little slow. Let's speed up. This turned out pretty great. Now it's just a matter of painting all of the other pieces, and I'm not going to show all of them, but let's start with the arms and then the legs. I like to use toothpicks for smaller pieces, skewers for even larger ones, and then sometimes you can even use the back of your paintbrushes for pieces that are a little bit of a unique size. I set everything aside to dry and I like to reuse some boxes like chocolate boxes. Now we move on to the face. Basically after that first coat, it's time to go in with a very watery layer for the skin. This looks pretty light right now, but it'll actually dry into a much darker color after a few more layers. Here everything has its final flat layers of acrylic color and it's just going through another dry period. I like to give everything 30 minutes. I thought a unique Nendoroid base would really help this figure, so I decided to make a black Nendoroid base. Basically the easiest way to change your Nendoroid bases is to water down the desired color and then fill in the bottom side and then set it aside to dry overnight. That way you get a nice clean Nendo base. Since I had this tiny shield, why not give it its own little dark link adaptation? I'm using the same technique to fill in all of the parts to make this a black and silver shield. Whoops, my big thumb is in the way. Sorry about that, guys. Let's go back to the face and start working on the eyes. Basically, to get Link's glowing eyes, I'm going to keep building up colors of red and light pink till I get a nice round glowy center. Now 
Now it's time to work on some of the belts that are on this figure. I wanted to go with a really solid black so that it would stand out from its base dark gray tunic tone. I needed to test out my silver paint since I'm using a new one that I'm unfamiliar with, and since I wasn't so attached to this sheath, I thought I would try it here. It ended up looking great, so I'm going to use it on the buckles as well. It took about seven layers of acrylic paint to get these eyes, but I'm actually pretty happy with the effect. They're a little bit pinker than I was expecting, but I'm pretty okay with that. I had to hold my breath, but I also took my black paint and painted in Link's eyelashes. I made them a little bit thinner for the dark Link. Now that all my flats are done, it's time for a little bit of blushing. Blushing is when you take chalk pastel and you use a paintbrush to brush it over acrylic paint. It'll actually give this this airbrush effect. I decided it was necessary to do the back a little bit more since the back of Flink's hair would be underneath his hat. I think you can see the blushing a little bit more in the hair. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. You guys can tell me in the comments. But in the end, I think it really helped the figure. With all the flat paint and the blushing done, it was time to seal everything in. I use Mr. Hobby gloss top coat and the testers clear coat to cover everything and make sure the paint won't chip. Now I wasn't planning on doing anything with a dark fairy, but since I had it right here, I thought it'd be fun to make a dark fairy variant and I really wanted some glittery wings. So with a little bit of some glossy nail polish, I decided to give a sparkle to these little fairy's wings. She'll also be receiving a nice glossy top coat, and I'm really happy with how she turned out. Never forget the angry eyebrows. I decided to try a glossy varnish on the eyes, and I really like the effect, even though they did turn a little bit orange, but it really helped with that pink color that I wasn't happy with. Nendos don't necessarily need clear coat on their eyes, I just like the effect. After everything dried with three coats, I decided to start putting everything together. Just for fun, I decided to give this Nendoroid a battle damage sword. I cut in a few score marks and blushed it so it had a bit of a darker tinge. I really like the effect, but I wasn't so pleased with the Nendoroid stem, so I decided to switch it out in the end. Oh, right, and I forgot, I did finish up the shield, and I should probably add that to the Nendoroid as well. I didn't expect this Link to be so battle-ready. And now that that's in place, it's time to set up the rest of the Nendoroid. Enjoy! <laughs> 